We all know that countries establish embassies on one another's soil, Mexican consulate, Swiss embassy, but what is the International Christian Embassy of Jerusalem? What kind of an embassy is this? Find out next on The Crossover. We'll be right back. For nearly 2,000 years, Jews and Christians have been divided. But now, God is calling for the healing of past hurts and the comforting of His people. Discover how God is prophetically uniting Jews and Christians across the world today on The Crossover. Here are your hosts, Mitch and Rosalie Jerome. Today's special guest, Reverend Malcolm Hedding, has been Executive Director of International Christian Embassy of Jerusalem since 2000. Prior, he was in the trenches planting churches in Africa for 25 years and fighting against the evils of apartheid. Malcolm, welcome to our show, The Crossover. We're glad you're taking the time to be, to be with much. us today. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to uh, start here. We want to give some exposure to the ICEJ, as we mm -hmm. said in the intro. And you're one of the foremost Christian organizations in the world, and you're dealing with Israel, you're dealing with the church, you're dealing with relationships between the two of them. And how did you personally get involved in that dynamic? Well, I think it began in 1975 for me in that in that year a friend of mine um, founded an organization called Christian Action for Israel and this particular individual was a very spiritual and uh, interesting guy he had an ability to pinpoint the purpose of God in our time his name was Basil Jacobs and I joined him in 1975, although at that time I was planting churches in Southern Africa. And that began, uh, for me, a journey of uh, engaging the Jewish people as a Christian. And he went on in 1980 to be one of the founders of the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem. And of course I got involved on the ground floor as well. So that's basically my beginning. The International Christian Embassy uh, was founded in September 1980. And it was birthed as a revolution, in, in fact, at that time. Um, given the history of Christianity, given the um, establishment of the Jewish state uh, in 1948, you know, just 30-odd uh, just years before, and the idea of establishing a Christian evangelical movement in Jerusalem, uh, using the word embassy on purpose to, yeah. to designate representation, reaching out, holding hands, uh, was quite radical for Israelis. So To accept that. Huh? To accept Especially that. Especially Christians <clears throat> coming to the land, is that what you're saying? And, that's, and it, it was greeted with a lot of suspicion. And it was by the good fortune of God a reality that uh, a certain individual called Harry Hurwitz, who was the chief advisor to the Prime Minister of Israel at, at that time, who was Menachem Begin, Harry Hurwitz was a South African Jew who was the head of the South African Zionist Federation and then made Aliyah. But in the 70s, he became aware of people like Basil Jacobs and this sort of very small initiative to do something to, to somehow rectify the problems of the historical past. And he stepped in in Jerusalem and basically said to the Prime Minister, you know, if you don't put your weight behind this type of initiative, it'll never fly. So the wonderful thing is, in the timing of God, Menachem Begin supported the idea of the Christian embassy. Totally open to it. Yeah. Before we jump into that, was there, when you were in Africa birthing churches, etc., and came across this gentleman yeah. that, that had the spark for Israel, yeah, yeah. did you have one particular moment in your life that you knew, this is it, I've got to go that way? Yeah, yeah it was in, in the course of my theological education. Um, where I was uh, doing a Bachelor of Theology degree at a, a major faculty of uh, theology, which was accredited with London University. 
and the University of South Africa. And while we had a lot of good lecturers, they were all good in fact. Some of them uh, were in the more replacement reformed tradition. And, and, and we have to be honest, while they were outstanding lecturers and devotional people, when it came to expounding the Old Testament books, you know, like Isaiah or Jeremiah and whatever, the way they handled Israel uh, was for me as a young Christian uh, being educated um, impossible to swallow. And I began to question. Because and, it was replacement theology. Yeah, and they would say, well, this, although the text here ref says Israel, you must see the church there. Yeah. And I, I remember getting up in classes and saying, uh, but Dr. Tyler, you know, I don't see that. You know, I see the context as quite literal. And I, I, I cannot, in my wildest imagination, uh, see how you can just suddenly say, you must read the church here. So what percent of the class did you represent there? Uh, ah, quite a few, actually. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and anyway, yeah. we had these lively debates. But, but that was the defining moment for me. And I realized that there was some disconnect here. And I wanted to find out why. So it led me on a journey. And, and God took me on that journey. And uh, that's where I am today. Yeah. So... So give us a story here, because it said on your website, let's go jump into the ICEJ, Yeah, and you guys are reaching your hands out, 30 years in the land, demonstrating Christian love to the Jewish people. I've got to just slip a little bit over that Christian love, because, you know, it gets kind of overdone here <clears throat> in America, that term, but make it real. What, give us a story of Pacific, of what does that translate to? Well, I think... You know, you ever hear ever sloppy agape is the way it's preached here sometimes? Yeah, and, yeah. It's but now we're dealing yeah. in the land of a whole different level. Yeah, this is not a sentimental thing. I think, I think chiefly, when one reads a statement like that, um, one has to read it for, from our perspective uh, in the context of the historical Christian history. And also for us as Christians, we are Christians, and we therefore believe that there's been a distorted image of Jesus projected to the Jewish people, um, sadly through the church, uh, historically, with all its awful consequences. And I suppose part of the importance of an organization like ours is rectifying that distorted image. And rather than a sloppy sentimental thing of, of you know, say, oh, we hug you and this, it's, it's, it's an engagement on truth. And it's an engagement uh, uh, like Jesus that, that puts its money where its mouth is. In other words, we, we will make a difference. So give us an example. In, in Israel. And, uh, and, 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 and the example of that is, of course, uh, I mean, there's, there's hundreds and thousands of projects that the International Christian Embassy does in the name of Jesus. And, uh, and, and we could talk for hours, but... Uh, you know, one of them is in the Intifada years, for instance, we supplied the children of Ifrat with a bulletproof bus. Now, this type of project, believe it or not, costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. So this is one of the <coughs> Jewish settlements? Yeah, yeah. Kids have to go to school. And they're getting shot up on the road, and some of them have already been killed, and there's a need for a bulletproof bus. So we stepped yeah. in and said, we will supply that need. Yeah. But on the bus, it's clearly stated, you know, that this is the gift ICEJ, ICEJ from Christians all over the world. Mm -hmm. So it's a practical demonstration. Mm -hmm. It's a big statement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a big statement. And, uh, and there it's are... It's Christian love in action. It's Christian love in action. It's not just mouthing off, uh, you know, that we love you. I mean, for instance, in the, in the town of Ashkelon, um, we built for the mentally and physically challenged children, a state-of-the-art swimming pool with, you know, stairways into it, special jacuzzi jets in it, a big pool, like a, not just a little garden pool, a massive pool, and, uh, you know, with uh, all sorts of facilities, even you can wheel a wheelchair like a ramp into the pool with, with holding rails. Now, believe it or not, this type of thing costs a fortune. Mm hundreds of thousands of dollars, but we saw the need and we provided it. 
so that those children can be the recipients of the type of treatment they need to live a normal life mm. and to have dignity. And at the same time, we gave it as a gift to the municipality. But once again, you know, with a beautiful plaque stating very clearly, this has come from Christians all over the world. Yeah. And what a big statement. So the Jewish yeah. people right there are receiving the material goods, but they also know the heart. They also know the, the heart. That these it. are Christians who, who, who want to make a difference. The Crossover presents Jewish-Christian Relations. Some Christian leaders are concerned about the global rise of anti-Semitism threatening the survival of Israel and the Jewish people. Their reason is rooted in the Bible. Anti-Semitism is an attack against God because the Jewish people represent God in their life and history. That's the message of the book of Esther, where there was a systematic attempt to liquidate the Jewish people because they prayed to the God of Israel. Several benevolent ministries are providing support and comfort to Israel and the Jewish people worldwide. The International Christian Embassy Jerusalem is one such ministry. From our inception, we've had a clear biblical mandate based on Isaiah 40 verse 1 to comfort the Jewish people because of the long centuries of a legacy of Christian anti-Semitism. We now want to show the true face of Jesus and be engaged in deeds that are meet for repentance that show we're truly sorry for what was done to them in the past. Churches are being challenged to reject all forms of anti-Semitism. They are building a new relationship with the Jewish people based on mutual respect. The historical grounds for anti-Semitism within the church have been what we've called replacement theology. It is a sad fact that the last book that Martin Luther wrote was called Against Jews and Their Lies. This particular book became fodder for the Nazi regime in their attempt to destroy the Jewish people. Our aid program helps meet social needs through a variety of projects and programs across Israel. The need in Israel is very great, with 20% of the population on or below the poverty line. We do this in coordination with social agencies and organizations who work in every sector of the society. And these programs uh, cover a range of things, including soup kitchens, food distribution projects, educational projects, heaters and blankets in the wintertime, and a multitude of other uh, needs that are coming across our desk every day. It's a pleasure and an honor to be able to assist, and we're glad to be here to do that. To reciprocate, leading Israeli institutions are partnering with Christian organizations in building bridges for a better tomorrow. One of the miracles in our generation is the sea change which has taken place, a change in which the Christian Jewish community, the mother, child religions have come together after close to 2,000 years of enmity. And the fact is that we have an institute for Jewish-Christian understanding and cooperation which has regular dialogues, regular discussions on the highest of theological levels. We must have a united voice of religion for peace. Welcome back to The Crossover. Here with us, Malcolm, I know you go around the world and you're, you're in some of the most unlikely places, I'm going to presume. Mm -hmm. Give us a story of Christian love in a place we never would have even have thought it would be birth. Well, I think, you know, as I mentioned today, uh, in, the, in the one meeting, traveling to Nigeria, and what I didn't say is, you know, there we met with these 10,000 Christian leaders um, who've had no real contact with Western Christianity. No one's come and taught them on Israel. These are people who read this book and saw that there's a lot to say about Israel in here and decided that the Holy Spirit had placed upon their hearts that they needed to fast and pray for Israel. And so they invited us to Port Harcourt. Now the interesting thing about Port Harcourt it's one of the most dangerous places on the earth. That's where the Niger Delta is. Okay. And they have all these kidnappings there over the oil there. Okay. That's the oil reservoir okay. of Nigeria. Nigeria. <clears throat> and you have these uh, rebel groups that are 
fighting the government there because they see the oil barons as raping Nigeria of its wealth. Okay. And the Nigerians are left poverty stricken. It's now, not even there. They don't even get the money. From they don't that. get the kickback. And there's government corruption and so on. Mm. But nevertheless, we fly into an airport there that has no lights on the runway. And, uh, and we make it there. We, we're given a, 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 an armed escort throughout the time we're there. But we arrive and there are 10,000 people uh, seeking God on behalf of Israel. Now, that is astonishing. 10,000 in the middle of Nigeria. In the middle of Nigeria village. in a facility that you, you wouldn't even call a proper meeting place. In a toilet where you have to take water yourself and flush it. <laughs> and these people. And these people are lying on their faces. Yeah. And, and, you know, this is phenomenal. I mean, this is humbling. And, you know, and then we've... we've and been how did they find you? They found, they found us because we have a, we have a Nigerian director called uh, Mosey Madagba, a very powerful preacher, by the way. And, uh, and, and he, he put them in contact with us. And, you know, the, I've been to countries like, you know, even Hong Kong. You, you, will, you, you cannot imagine what is happening in Hong Kong, China. Give us a story. With, with Israel today, you've got, first of all, the movement of uh, the house church movement in China called the Jesus Family. And, um, and, and that is um, an amazing movement uh, that has birthed millions and millions of believers in China. Now, the famous uh, brother Yun, comes out of that movement. He wrote a book called The Heavenly Man. He's one of the most persecuted men on the earth today. He was jailed by the Chinese, and to keep him from escaping as a preacher and, and going back on the streets to preach, they broke both his legs and left him without medical wow. uh, treatment. Wow. He had a visitation like Peter of an angel that took him out of jail. Wow. So when we're talking, you, you, you're talking major miracles and visitations of God here. And, and this movement, we had Pastor Yun at our feast a few years ago in Jerusalem. Okay. This movement, apart from being a harvesting machine for the kingdom of God like you can never believe, this movement has been impacted internally by their own study and waiting on God with a desire to bless Israel. And the Holy Spirit has taught them that they have to pray for Israel and they have to get into the battle from an intercession point of view on behalf of Israel. So they so, don't have to hear it from the media. They didn't they hear got it from, touched. They got touched from the spirit of God in their heart. In their heart. And and this is an incredible thing, you know, and um, and uh, so and, and if you go to that area as we have, uh, we've visited the underground church in China and we've also been to the church in Hong Kong, which is also Chinese today, it's China. You will not believe what is happening there. Well, we're going to take a break here in a second. When we come back, we want to hear what's going on in China. We want to hear about some reconciliation between yeah. Jews and Christians, some of your experience there, Malcolm. So don't turn the channel. Stay tuned. We'll be back with Malcolm Heading in just a moment. Reuniting Jews and Christians in fulfillment of biblical prophecy. Join Mitch and Rosalie as they tackle tough topics and welcome dynamic guests on The Crossover. The Promised Land. And I also try to make it very clear to the Christians all over the world that they are threatened to the same extent as the Jews and Israel is, are threatened. Uh, and I also say basically that Jews and Christians are waiting for the Messiah, who is a Jew from Israel who speaks Hebrew. And that Messiah is going to come to Jerusalem. And so Christians share this faith with the Jews. The Hebraic roots of Christianity. And we begin looking at Jesus through Jewish spectacles and not our Texas spectacles or American spectacles or even Western culture spectacles. He's so much more glorious. He's so much more grand. It does not in any way detract from the fact that he's the son of God, the risen savior, but he's also a man. Never forget. The Nazis would rent entire trains from New York City 
And here you have the train pulling in to Camp Siegfried. It's it like looks like Germany. Germany. You would not believe exactly. that this is America. This is, uh, if you didn't see the picture, yeah, you wouldn't believe it. And uh, right below it is the Nazi headquarters. That picture you're looking at now is the headquarters of the Nazis gotcha. in America. And Christians are also understanding their, their Hebraic roots. And I think that's what the crossover is doing, is putting all of this together. And, and, it's, and it's new and fresh to everyone. Judaism 101. Many times people ask, what is a Jew? Is it a race? It is, is it a people? Is it a culture? Jewish-Christian relations. Bible, fact or fiction. The crossover is really on the, the, the cutting edge of what's happening in the Christian world today. It looks at Jesus from a perspective that a lot of people have never looked at it before. But everybody wants to see it. I mean, you turn on uh, all the Christian channels. And what are they talking about? They're talking about why Jesus did this and why Jesus did that. Why the apostles do this or that. And that's what's unique about the crossover. They're one of the few organizations that actually understands the background of why Jesus did what he did. Because they're, they're from a similar background. And, I, that's, and that's what the world really wants at this particular time. Here again, Mitch Jerome. Welcome back to The Crossover. Today's guest is Executive Director of International Christian Embassy Jerusalem, Malcolm Hedding. And we're just continuing on with our dialogue. And Malcolm, you're going to take us uh, overseas here to China yeah. and share with us a, a I was, story. I was telling you about the Jesus family. Now, the Jesus family comes out of the work of the famous Watchman Nee. And when the expatriate church was forced to leave China because of the Chinese Revolution and Mao Zedong, it was this Jesus family which became the bedrock of Chinese Christianity. Now, today in China, in some cases, whole cities and towns have been converted to Jesus. I'm not talking 100%, but... I am talking that you could say, while this city was not Christian before, now it's Christian. Because of a few. <clears throat> because of a remnant. Be and, and no, and, and also a massive evangelistic drop, which is quite phenomenal. And this, this, these are the people that, that came out of Watchman Nee's uh, heritage. And, and that shows us something, you see, that a godly heritage brings forth a ripe harvest in the years to come. But these people have birthed this ministry, and this is the ministry that today is driving the evangelization of China, and, of course, a tremendous desire to bless Israel, pray for Israel, and they're so far away. They've never been to Israel. Mm -hmm. They've never seen Israel. They, it's very unlikely that they will. And, uh, and yet there's this incredible birthing of the Holy Spirit within them. And you are seeing this, ICEJ is, is having influence in how many countries? We, we are working today in 114 countries. How many countries are there in the world? It's, I think there's something like 200, and 200 or something. Okay. So in 100 and some odd countries, there's this touch mm. of people yeah. for Israel. It's phenomenal. And obviously it's not from It's not from man. Preaching and it's not no, from man. It's not from man. I mean, there, there, there are island kingdoms today, like Micronesia and Fiji. Let me tell you, they have, they have been so thoroughly evangelized in recent years, almost with a visitation from heaven that is quite unbelievable. But we know nothing about it because they don't get into the mainstream media. But, and I've got to just say this, Micronesia, <clears throat> wherever this place is, yeah, is, is the only yes. country besides the U.S. that will stand Stands in the U.N. Yeah, and right. vote for Israel. That's right. They're <laughs> a South Pacific island. And, so and How did that happen? There's a little nothing country that, out of nowhere that right. has a backbone for Israel. That's right. And a few years ago, um, I've traveled within the former Soviet Union, and uh, I was invited to Estonia. You know, Estonia is a small country dominated by the Soviets. In fact, the Estonian Christian began the collapse of communism. Did you know that? 
to very brave Estonian Christians in the old city of Tallinn who used a radio station to rally the Christians in, in a massive peaceful protest against the Russian occupiers. And they brought them out in their hundreds of thousands on the streets of Tallinn. And they actually said almost, kill us, but we're not leaving. You're going to have to kill us. Well, and we're not going to use violence. We're just going to stand and pray. But now we invite you, drive over us or kill us with your tanks or leave. Hmm. And that was the what beginning. Wow. Yeah. Now, that movement in Tallinn, strangely enough, is undergirded by a phenomenal love for Israel. So I was invited, I've been there a few times, but a few years ago I was invited to address the parliament. You know, and you, now, now Estonia has recently uh, joined the, the European Union. So no matter how small the country is, its vote in the European Union is as powerful as the rest. Equal. <clears throat> That's Equal right. Vote. So I reminded them uh, of their huge responsibility to use yes. this opportunity to do what's right by Israel. So these are remarkable times. To our, to our Christian um, viewers, I'd like to say, the International Christian Embassy exists as your feet and your arms and your voice and your heart and your eyes in engaging the Jewish people and demonstrating to the nation of Israel that they are certainly not alone that there are millions of Christians worldwide who believe that your restoration is absolutely biblical. It's not an act of coincidence, of political chance, but certainly an act of God. And these Christians from all over the world are Israel's best friend. Well, bless you, Malcolm, and ICEJ for the works that you people do out there, standing bold and strong with Israel. We're glad you came on our show. And Thank you much. Maybe we can do this again. God bless you. Thank you for joining us on today's show. We hope it ministered to you. As the world demonizes Israel and turns against her, we the remnant must stand and speak on her behalf and be there for her people. It's what the Lord Almighty requires. The Jewish people constitute the eternal plan of God. That's all for this week. Come back again next week as we offer our hearts and hands to reunite Jews and Christians through the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on the crossover. Remember, these are prophetic times, and God is at work. Shalom. Shalom. Join Mitch and Rosalie as they reach an ever-growing worldwide audience through the crossover. We invite you to become a crossover partner right now by calling the number on your screen. For your monthly gift of $30 or more, you will receive the Crossover Partnership Pack, which includes a DVD of today's program, a personal greeting and prayer message from Mitch and Rosalie, more information about the Crossover Project. As you continue to support the Crossover each month, you will receive a new Crossover DVD, plus a ministry report, and your name will be added to our healing room. Call now and join the growing family of Crossover Partners.